What's going on everybody? Today's video, we're going to be mounting one of our Fulcrum 14 wings to our GT350. Now, in a previous video, I go over how we make these trunks. If you're a little more interested in the composites part of things, I'll put a tag right up here to that video. But real quick overview, since we make these trunks in-house, we lay them up in a way that they support our wing kits. So real quick, you can see full carbon fiber construction. The wing will end up landing right around here on both sides. And when we lay these up, we just put extra carbon where it's needed, as well as the interior of the trunk has all the provisions for uh, wiring harness and even the holes if you wanted to put the trim panel back on. But generally, by the time you get to this level of trunk and everything, you, you probably won't be putting that on. But anyways, it's an option. As for the wing kit, this is our Fulcrum 14, which is a 14 inch corded wing. All the CFD and wind tunnel videos, everything. I'll put a link below to CFD and our wind tunnel videos if you're into that stuff. But basically what we need to do, um, we're just going to mount this wing to this trunk. And the uprights are right there. You know, there's the old GT350 stuff. I know that a factory trunk is about 21 pounds. And our carbon fiber trunk is only 9. This one weighed out at 9.15 pounds. So, you know, huge weight savings uh, coupled with, again, being in the wind tunnel with this wing directly versus our GT350 wing, you know, there's a huge performance gain as well. So enough talk, let's get into it. All right, so before you start, you wanna get your tools together. A quarter inch ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket. I got mine on my zippy gun because it'll be a little bit easier for some of the nuts. Two 10 millimeter wrenches, you know, a long one might be a little easier. Short one might be able to get in there to, to certain ones. Um, four millimeter Allen, eighth inch Allen for the wing end caps or I'm sorry, end plates. Um, and then same thing with a four millimeter Allen on this might make it easier to sometimes turn the head of the bolt rather than the nut from inside the trunk. Um, tape Sharpie drill. This is a carbon fiber drill bit. I expect most people will not have one of these so I will do a few holes with a regular drill bit it works just as good but this just drills carbon fiber faster and last thing not here is a tape measure little hard to see what I'm doing under time lapse but you can see that right here and here is our midpoint line of the entire trunk under time lapse you probably saw me measuring up here so we know what the exact width is between the uprights and it is 18 and a half which means we want this face of each upright nine and a quarter inches out of the center line now this piece of tape here if you look down at long ways because it's a thick piece of tape when I lay it out it, it won't really turn so since I have two points you know I, I know I just have a straight line down the whole thing now the reason we want to measure from midline out before this gets bolted on uprights are actually a little bit flimsy and can kind of move so I'll push on it real quick and you can see See how much it can kind of move in and out maybe a half inch or so and any uprights will be like that because you have so much distance from them being mounted on the wing up here down here so you want to take some measurements from midline to nine and a quarter each way then mark and drill your holes don't just plop it up there and kind of center it because the uprights could be 
you know, in or out a tiny bit, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Uh, you kind of just want to make sure it's square. Alright, so two quick notes. One, again, might be hard to notice under time lapse, but when I was making these marks, I was pushing the upright this direction because if it comes off of this rear end, even an eighth of an inch, every one of these marks that you put on will be an eighth of an inch rearward. So if you tighten these ones in, or if you do it the opposite way, get all these lined up, it'll really kind of have to squeeze these in or vice versa, if these are down, then all of these holes won't line up with the holes on the wing upright. So there's that note. The other thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna drill one or two holes with the carbon bit. And then like I mentioned earlier, I'll just use regular drill bits as well. Nice and easy. Now what we'll do, we'll just go small bit to larger bit. So you can just see how much longer it takes. go so still quarter inch hole just takes a little bit longer now I'll show you where the holes should land so you know you got it pretty right so you can see we're like right in line with these two inner ribs and again when we lay this up we put extra reinforcement where it's needed so you can see how the foot plates tie into the inner structure of the trunk the other two are up and in there which you can get your hand through here so you shouldn't have to drill any extra holes or anything um, and then obviously same thing on the other side since we took all of our measurements we're almost dead on there and dead on this extra bit of inner trunk structure as well So here's where we're at. The left one is completely done. The right one, I only have the middle ones tightened because this video is kind of just demonstration purposes. But if we pop the trunk, one thing to note, the hinges do lock out, but you can see how close they get to the glass, maybe about a half inch or so. Now also, this puts the wing about even with the rear bumper when it's closed. If you wanted more setback, we would just shape the uprights so they're not, they don't sweep forward as much. Uh, so keep that in mind. Or if you went with our Apex 8 but wanted it set back, kind of the same deal. So just keep that in mind. As far as the washers go, it comes with an assortment of these larger fender washers and these smaller washers you can see right there or used on this one. The larger washers help tie it into this inner structure. Up here though, as you can see, if we used a large washer, it would have started hitting this curve. So just the short one is fine. You also gotta think that, you know, when this trunk is down, these ones see down for so like a larger washer isn't really gonna do anything for you there. I think you can see, so, you know, I got larger washers on those ones. I think larger washers on the back, but again, whatever washers kind of work. 
And then to close it, I think my little pull string is like messing with it, but at this point, it works just like a normal trunk. Once everything's tightened up, the end plates go on and you're set. The other thing you're definitely gonna wanna do, whether a stock trunk or our trunk, make sure the bump stops are in it and make sure this inner trim panel, uh, this guy right here, is on it because the downforce from the wing, the way it ties into this inner structure, the, some of the load will pass through these bump stops into the chassis of the car. So just make sure those things are in as well. All right, so last order of business is to weigh this whole assembly along with this whole assembly. The only difference between these two right now is this has the rear finish panel, which I have a spare one and it's only about two and a half pounds. So we'll add that weight to that one. But otherwise, inside they're all stripped. So they're like for like. We're gonna hang it from our little scale hanging right there. Thirty-one point two. Thirty-one point one nine. Twenty-six point nine. So we'll call it twenty-seven if we add that two and a half pounds. About twenty-nine and a half. You know, once you put the finish trim on it. So that's a couple pound savings, um, which if you're just only looking at weight, you know, nothing too spectacular. But the fact that we had this set up in the wind tunnel and it only made about 125 pounds at 100 mile an hour, where this wing at 100 mile an hour made, hold on a second. All right, I had to double check our wind tunnel data, but that setup, it was hanging now outside to take some pictures that set up at zero degree wing angle with no gurney flap still made 297 pounds of downforce on the rear versus the 125 from the Cobra R wing so you're looking at over double the downforce at that one's minimum setting you know you can put the gurney in it add some wing angle and really start making some downforce as long as the front is balanced out We'll be doing a video on our splitter install very soon as well. So that's where we're going to wrap this one up. Hope you guys enjoyed it, learned something. As always, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next one.